So somehow I missed two additional Monarch's Journeys that have come out since last I recorded for Monarch's Journeys and well since it would be fun if this channel grew a tiny little bit more we're going to look at the most recent one Grandamere Botstein which is also fun because I've been preparing a series on how to play Merchant Republic which I am learning myself currently because that's not something I've ever really played. So let's look at well, we'll just jump straight in. We are playing Grand Mayor Botstein as a Merchant Republic. We have a very cool sigil here. Uh, let's let's just jump in. We set all this to Iron Man mode, and the only thing we turn off is the Aztec invasion. We start the game, put it to cloud, start the Iron Man. Nothing much here. As a reminder, I do play with all the um, add-ons all the DLC enabled. You don't necessarily have to. I believe you can play the Monarch's Journeys in the free versions itself. Though I believe some of them do require certain DLC, but they should point that out. Okay, so let's see. What is our job anyway? The challenges. Aegir's Island. Successfully make Gotland an independent kingdom by becoming king and appointing Gotland to your capital. Uh, completely control the Duchy of Gotland, have a minimum of 20 cities in your realm, have a fully upgraded family palace, have a province. Boy, this one's gonna take a while. Um, we have to have own as many trade posts as possible. You can either construct or seize control of them. The trade post needs to have a minimum. Uh, the second tier upgrade on all buildings to count towards score. All right, this is a dynastic one as just as much as this one total number of cities make Gotland a grand republic with as many trade posts as possible progress continues as long okay so all these are dynastic having 60 trade posts sounds like a lot then actually know if I've ever done this however I don't think it has to be your own trade polls it just has to be basically Gotland so let's figure out I think um, as a trade republic my experience is that you would first and foremost try and build up and not really think about most of the other things going on around you and we are losing our title right now so that's something we need to take care of first so what do we need to do Duchy of Gotland okay have a minimum of 20 cities right mm-hmm of the province of Gotland. Uh, okay, so let's figure out. This is Gotland. And we hold the Republic of Gotland and the Grand City of Gotland. Is. Let's see, what do we belong to? Kingdom of Sweden and the Empire of Scandinavia. Do we have a chance to become like independent or something? There is no option to do it this way. Hmm. What do you want me to do? Completely control the Duchy of Gotland. What is everything that belongs to this? What is the Why does it not count? We already do that. Probably we have to have all the other things as well. Okay, so we can never lose this. Now, playing as a Merchant Republic, I'm going to explain a little bit about it because I feel like that's something that's not played a lot and it's going to be a bit different from all the other ones. So your main resource is gold. Obviously, gold makes sense for any time type of uh, government, but for the Merchant Republic, it is essential for title loss. So why are we losing our title right now? We have a son, our heir, who is zero years old. We are 19, we are very young, so we have a bunch of time ahead of us. Potentially. See, in a republic, there is this campaign going on, basically constantly. And children uh, cannot earn respect, so they are never going to be eligible heirs in a republic. It's not the worst thing in the world if you lose a re grand republic. It does lose you some money, but it is very survivable. So if you, as long as you have an heir, 
you're not going to be out of the game. You might not be the ruler of the Grand Republic you're part of, but that's something you can deal with. Now, one of the very best ways of dealing with all these competitors, in my experience, is making sure that they too only have a kid uh, as an heir. Or that they are all kids, because then they really don't have a choice. We will have to survive at least four years until our brother comes of age. And we still have a bit of time to help him develop in a certain direction. And I think we're going to go toward diplomacy. Any of uh, diplomacy, stewardship or intrigue are fine for this. But you can make anything work for anything. So I don't think that's all that important. Now we're not going to worry about this too much for now. Uh, because there's not much we can do about it. We have to wait for our heir to come of age. And then we can appoint people. Let's appoint people right now. Let's get a designated regent. You can tell the other grand families by the crest they have. It's it's with these little reddish um, cloth pieces. Never give them any sort of power. Ever. Because that increases their respect that they have. Which is derived from their age and their prestige and all those things. So... These jobs here, you give to people who don't matter all that much, like your mother or, you know, your son. Again, it's it's more reasonable. You can designate your heir and you can switch it whenever you want, but it's more reasonable to put someone who is actually old enough to do it. So he will be our first choice. And our court physician isn't really all that great, but uh, at least we have one. Again... None of these get any of the other jobs that are good. They just don't. Ever. Because you just help them be more of an issue against you. Make sure that you use, once your heir comes of age, make sure you give them these titles. So they can accumulate prestige and money. And potentially make a very good heir. We don't have any commanders that we need to kick out. We do have a whole bunch of counselors, though. It doesn't matter that they're powerful vassals. In, in my experience, at least, it doesn't really matter all that much. What matters much more is whether or not they are gaining prestige. So, in my world, the council gets replaced and we go by a meritocracy. So, the best man gets the job. And the other ones can just, you know, live with the issues that arise from this. He's a good spy master and he loves us well too. So uh, let's give this man this job. He shall go train troops for us. And this... No, we will find someone better outside the realm, but he will become our spy master. And he will scheme at home. And you can do, I don't know, which cultural tech. Nah. He can he can hunt apostates, it's fine. Uh, we could send him out to talk to, you know, the Pope or something, but it doesn't matter. So all these are gonna hate us now, but it's fine. They hate us anyway. We don't need them to be our friends. So let's check our own uh, special title. So we make this our capital focus thing. Wait. Okay, this B is just a... In 1066... We're quite behind on all this. This is not great. Here we have another slot to potentially build a city at some point, which we can then own. Um, yeah, let's find ourselves a good steward and a good commander. So we search everywhere. And we use a filter that looks for men who are not in prison, not rulers, in diplomatic range and willing to join the court. And then we just sort them by what we need. This guy is a good commander as well. We can use some better commanders. Not that we're going to need them. There's not a lot of war ahead. Well, potentially anyway. And we want... Trusting, just, stubborn. He's going to be a good... Counselor, Chancellor. Not going to be much of an issue. Alright. So we have invited some commanders. A good... Steward, and now comes the moment of truth where we need to pick our own um, focus. And 
I have found seduction to be extremely powerful because we are probably going to scheme a whole bunch. Um, obviously, business or stewardship or something is more self-evident because it increases directly how much money you earn. But to keep in power, to manipulate the other families, I find seduction to be extremely useful. So we'll pick this. Uh, especially since sex appeal plus 10, that is just a flat out positive modifier for anyone who is either homosexual or a woman. And if all the women are head over heel for you, you will have no issue finding people to help you in your murderous plots, which we will need inevitably to make it. So, and we want to groom an heir because uh, we only have one son. And another thing that we need boys and men for is the more male uh, adults of our dynasty we have in court, the more trading posts we are allowed to build. There are other modifiers for it, such as the trade practices um, technology tree here. But the best one for the time being is probably going to be through our sons. So we've done all the preparations that we want to do right now. And since I've been playing in Trade Republic, I already have this set up. Let's check out the area we are dealing with. And I just realized that this there over this, this Gotland. There's Gotland. Oh, there's a trading zone that belongs to uh, the Hainum family of the Republic of Gotland. Is that us now? Okay, so the ownership of one of these zones, first of all, all the red zones are ours, but we can um, go a little bit deeper by holding down CTRL and left clicking on the area that we want to have a better look at. And we will see all these family names uh, that are actually the ones controlling. So we have Gildehus, Henjum and Stroben. And us, Stenkirka, we don't exist anywhere yet. We do hopefully have a trade post here. Yes, we do. But the amount of trade posts a family holds within one of these regions decides who owns it. And the ownership gives some bonuses to its output. That is basically how it works. Um, we're not too concerned with this. I'm just primarily looking for other trade republics that might exist. And we are the only northern ones. Now, if you want to build a trade post, you can basically click anywhere you want in the world that has a coastline. And trade posts that are connected to your main home trade post are always more powerful than the ones that are not. <clears throat> if there is an equal amount of trade posts in a trade region, such as the Bight of Hano, um, we have two trade posts, ours and this of this family. That means there is no owner. The reason these are owned is because each of these trade zones has exactly only one trade post in them right now. Fair enough. So we would want probably to build another trade post that sits here in this bite of Hanu so we can control this area which is going to be fairly important for our income. Now we don't earn all that much but it's also not too little and the first thing I really want to take care of is building up our fortunes a little bit while also staying in control. So let's start this game. I've talked long enough and we need to welcome a few people to court. Welcome and you become a commander, I believe. This is a commander and we can replace one of the worst commanders here with this man. And now we kick this guy out to welcome this man. Uh, okay, our first choice, if there's a god, why is the world filled with hardships, grief, and heretics? So, cynical is decent because it gives us two um, intrigue and monthly piety and all that isn't super important to us right now. So let's see and say god is as clueless as I am and we have become cynical. The one trait we really want is paranoid because being paranoid means we're basically impervious to plots against us. We have just moved our steward to collect some taxes, which potentially gives us some money extra. 
and you definitely want extra money as a trade republic. Now, the seduction focus that we picked doesn't make a lot of sense if we don't use it. So let's check out all the women that are around here. Let's make ourselves a little list of the women we would like to seduce. And uh, we don't care. We will basically get any woman who is related to anyone who is anyone. Oh, we already had her. Because, as I said, if they are your lovers, you will get quite the powerful potential of influencing the world around you. Because they will, as your lovers... Okay, she's much older than us, so um, the game is like, are you sure? Are you sure you want to pursue this older lady? But if they are your lovers, they are going to just help you. They will always be on your side. A good lover is very important. Okay, you want me to... Okay, you want me to support you, and I got fine. Let us leave her a note that she meets us by the stream. And now this is a bit of a toss. Uh, it's kind of hard. She's already flattered. She is attracted to strong. She is greedy, gluttonous, and Midas touched. She's not particularly learned. So one of these options up here is probably going to be it. I will try and confess our love. Let's see how that works out. Now that didn't work for her. But it is fine. We can deal with it. So we are being owed a favor, which... Okay. She has given us a gift, apparently, or something. Maybe. And she has gone from just flatter to also attracted, so our next attempts are going to be easier with her so it's just a matter of time until we get her we now have accumulated a bit a bit a bit of money we might be able to buy ourselves a trade post um not just yet everyone else is building trade posts right now you can see here so these guys are building a second one and they will own the trade zone after that I don't exactly know how we seize trade posts. I don't know how that works. Let's confess our love again. This time it worked and we will let our love grow. We have acquired our first lover. Making her no longer all that important to us. Let's get the next one. I mean, she's still very important, but you know, not for the day to day business of things. We could borrow money from the Jews to um, jumpstart our trade post building, but I am loath to do that. Okay, a young scullery maid with huge intellect uh, has had our attention and we can make a choice here. We can better and make her mine, uh, which gives us a modifier for the next 30 years of plus one intrigue and plot discovery chance plus 10%, which isn't bad. I mean, 30 years, that's a bunch of time. Or we could um, get ourselves another lover uh, who will then appear. Again, a lover is quite powerful in itself because they often protect one. Uh, they are not willing to join in plots. They might tell you about plots. So these are a bit... I don't know. I, I generally tend to go for the lover themselves because a the lover might also get pregnant and give you more children. <laughs> so... That's never a bad idea. Let's see. She is somewhat attracted. And, well, she's pregnant, but she is lustful. So we will make a lewd suggestion with that one. And it has worked in our favor. Very good. So let us get the next one. Lady Ranghild. She will be mine indeed. And I'm not too fussed or worried about keeping the Republic, anything like that. All of the monarch's journey goals are dynastic, so we have all the time in the world. And I haven't recorded one of these in a while, and, you know, why not? Have some fun with it. 
Okay, um... Ah, uh, we'll see. We need another tactic. Our attempts so far haven't worked. Our wife Ilva is pregnant. Very good. Very good, Ilva. Well done. Keep it up. Good. We should be able to afford another trade post. Now, where should we build it? There is this economy tab here. And you can tell that all the good spots are basically taken. And this one has its port in a different direction. So it wouldn't help us for our goal here. Uh, so we could only go for one of these two here. Which I don't think is all that interesting. I'd rather go for one that is a bit more wealthy. And uh, Maybe there is a zone that has no owner at all yet. So maybe the Gulf of Dunsick. Could be our actual goal here. And this one is probably better. We want one with high economy advances. I would be better off here. It's always a bit safer to put them in your own area of influence rather than in a different land that belongs to someone else but if i have a trade post here i can try and get cities and once i have a city i can try and get the county and that is also a way of expanding a realm here so this place only has one city but yeah why not go for this or upland no someone else is building there already well, our families are very industrious and we would have to save up to build elsewhere than here because the further away, the more expensive they become to build initially. Well, I'm wondering, should I build here just for the sake of it? I'd rather, I'd rather wait for this. Okay, let's, sa let's save up a bit more. And we'll build six, seven. Oh, very good. So let's ask her for mead in our room, which very often works. Not this time though, but I feel like she's attracted. Yes, she is. Our lover is also pregnant. Good stuff. Let us... She's paranoid. Let's confess our love. Come on, girl. She's going to be difficult just because she's paranoid and shy on top of it. But it's going in the right direction. So we'll have her. Come on, meet us by the stream. Let's try something else. Let's quote love poetry. No. <laughs> All right. I know we can do it. Just have to be patient. Uh, we haven't tried a lewd suggestion, so let's go with that. Next one is going to confess love again. Um, she's flattered. She's attracted. So the next one should be it. Um, uh, she'll be fine. We need the money to build a trade post. We can't support our wife right now. Our pregnant, pregnant wife. Okay. Come across Bishop Thomas sitting at his desk overburdened with work. We help him, so he now owes us a favor. Okay. On. Meet us by the stream and confess our love again. Nope, still not. Oh, she's flattered doubly so. Could maybe give her a gift as well. But we're saving him. So do we take this? Oh, I'd rather take something a little bit bigger. This has a forest. This has plains. Go for the one that has a forest and a river. Let's confess our love again. No? We're on a good path. I don't want to stop this one. Okay, there we go. Let's build off 
first, second trade post as well. And you can see how they all kind of belong to someone else. But it's fine. We will create our own here. And we have another true born son, which is good. He will become a thrifty one. Let's just quote some love poetry now. I don't know which option I just clicked. It might have misclicked, but that is also okay. So let's check the other republics here. Definitely want to take care of the first strongest one, but it doesn't matter. Because his heir... I mean, he's 19. Let's, let's plot to kill this man. What do you want? Tax shifted Burke obligations. That, uh, no. We don't want to pay more tax, thank you. You are very much declined. Hey you, um, call in your council support. You help me vote. And we have another boy which we will legitimize. Whom we will legitimize. Come on, meet us by the stream again and we will go for a lewd suggestion. Wow, she really doesn't want us. And you become thrifty as well. Go. We'll restrict the marriage. I mean, she's at 100. Come on, you really, really like us. We love you. Love us back. Why not? I've never experienced this. This is, this is a new one for me. All right, so so far so good. We haven't worked toward any of the goals, uh, but that's okay. We'll eventually get to it. I just want to have a good foundation because the Merchant Republic is something I don't know all too well. But that's why I'm also looking forward to playing this one quite a bit because it's going to be interesting to achieve all this without knowing enough about the methods and options I have. <laughs>